Hey everyone, and welcome to this review of Camp Coffee Brewers. The idea here isn't to pick one brewer to rule them all, but to figure out which one of these eight brewers is best for you and your needs. All eight brewers have at least a four star rating on REI's website and are under $50. Speaking of REI, we'd like to take a moment to thank them for providing us with all of these brewers to test. We're super thankful to have a partner like REI that enables us to create this kind of content for the outdoor community. As most of you know, we live out of our camper, so we don't have a ton of storage. That means we can't keep all of these brewers. So we're gonna be giving away to you guys. Stick around to the end of the video to see how you can enter for a chance to win one of the brewers we tested. All right, let's get started. Before we dive into all the different coffee brewers, I wanted to share how we make our coffee every day. We use the Snow Peak Folding Pour Over as our daily coffee solution. In addition to the Snow Peak, we use a Time More Scale, a 1Z Presso Grinder, and Hario Paper Filters. For the actual brewing process, we use the 4-6 method. If you're not familiar with it, it's intended to be used with a Hario V60, but we find that it works pretty well with the Snow Peak pour over too. We ended up with this coffee setup after many iterations. We've had a French press, an Aero press, a Clever dripper, and many different pour overs. It's something I really enjoy nerding out on, so it's been fun honing in on a solution that we're super stoked on. It's also made the past few weeks of testing really enjoyable. So without further ado, let's start talking about these brewers. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. This French press is just over the $50 mark, but it was rated really well and offered something a little bit different, so we thought it was worthy of being included. This is a beautiful little French press. It's extremely lightweight, which aids in it being travel friendly, and overall, I think it's very well designed. It also produced the most silt-free French press we've ever had, which was really nice. Rather than having all metal filters, there's a white nylon mesh filter, and I'm guessing that's what makes the difference. My first impression of the Snow Peak French Press was that it was actually smaller than I thought it would be. Its capacity is 700 milliliters, but once you add coffee, that number decreases. We found that 600 milliliters was maxing it out with 42 grams of coffee. We didn't like that the bottom of this French Press was rounded, which makes it wobbly on just about any surface. This French Press is also the only one that we tested that was not double walled, which means that you can heat water directly in it to simplify the process, but it also means that it won't retain heat for as long. Luckily, since it doesn't have a huge capacity, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Of all the French presses, we found ourselves grabbing this one the most. For one or two people, I think it's a really nice French press that's enjoyable and easy to use. Plus, it makes a good cup of coffee. The GSI French press is the largest of the brewers we tested with a one liter capacity. It's also double walled, so if you make a big batch, it'll keep your coffee warm even if you don't serve it all right away. It's just like a normal French press, which means it's easy to use and makes a good cup of coffee. But just like a normal French press, you'll find some silt at the bottom of your cup. One thing we noticed is that the lid can be a little confusing. It'll only pour if the lid is in the right position. The first time I used it, I put the word pour to the spout and spilled coffee everywhere. Turns out, the word pour needs to be at the opposite side of the spout to make it work. This isn't a flaw, it's just something that wasn't intuitive for me. If someone was brewing with this for the first time, I would certainly make a point of explaining this to them. Overall, it's a solid French press, and I think its biggest strength is its ability to brew large batches. When Mac's parents were visiting, this was the brewer of choice so that we could brew enough coffee quickly and easily for everyone. The Espro Travel Press is an interesting design that has some unique features when compared to the other French presses we tested. First, it's the only one that doubles as a drinking vessel, and second, the filters are in the shape of a basket rather than a disc. In practice, this press works very well and delivers a clean cup of coffee. We found much less silt in our cup when compared to the GSI French press. We did find the drinking lid to be a bit awkward because the plunger sits right in the center of the lid and blocks where your nose would naturally go. 
It wasn't a big deal for us because we had cups to pour the coffee into, but if you really like the idea of using this as a travel mug, it's something to consider. The Espro is only 16 ounces, making it the smallest of the French presses we tested, so we wouldn't recommend it if you're brewing for more than one person. If you're taking your coffee to go, this is absolutely the best French press option we tested. It comes with a lid so you don't have to worry about spills, and it's double walled to keep your coffee nice and warm. Ah, the AeroPress. This little brewer has a cult following, and rightfully so. It does make a great cup of coffee. What I find to be so interesting about the AeroPress is its versatility. You can make hot coffee, iced coffee, and even cold brew. While the AeroPress itself is small, all of the little doodads it comes with it makes the whole package a bit bulky compared to the other devices. Of course, this can be mitigated by just bringing the necessary items and storing the filters in a bag. The AeroPress is enjoyable to use and is the fastest of all the brewers we tried. When you're done, you just press the coffee and filter out straight into the trash, making cleanup quick and easy. The AeroPress also produced my favorite cup of coffee during the several weeks of testing. We brewed upright and inverted, and we found that we preferred brewing upright. We also made several cups of cold brew, and it was surprisingly tasty. One drawback of the AeroPress is that it just doesn't make that much coffee. You can, of course, brew concentrate and dilute it to make several cups, but we found that we preferred the taste of the normally brewed coffee. Since brewing and cleaning is quick and easy, it makes it not too much trouble to brew for each individual cup. Admittedly, I'm going to be sad to say goodbye to this one. The Stanley pour over set is a different take on pour overs. It has a metal cylindrical filter that sits in the middle of the brewer and then the coffee grounds go around it. It has a large capacity so you can brew multiple cups at once and it also comes with its own mug which is a nice touch. When brewing you want to be careful that the water is hitting the grounds and not the filter as the water could potentially bypass the coffee altogether if you're sloppy. During our testing, we brewed single cups, larger batches, and we experimented with Stanley's recommended brewing method and the 4-6 method. We found that the pour over worked well in all scenarios, but we preferred the single cups and the 4-6 cups. Since it uses a reusable metal filter, the coffee is more oily and does have a little bit of silt in it when compared to pour overs with a paper filter. Part of what I love about pour overs is that they're so easy to clean. I just pull out the filter, rinse the brewer, and I'm done. Unfortunately, the Stanley pour over is more of a chore. It's much more like cleaning a French press where you have to get the coffee out and then rinse it. It's a little more work and uses more water. It's not a deal breaker, but it is something to consider. We know a lot of people that use the GSI Java Trip and swear by it, so we were excited to give it a try. It's extremely lightweight, it collapses down, and it doesn't use filters, so it's ultra portable. Despite all those things, this was my least favorite brewer to use. I found it to be pretty finicky with the way the water's poured into it. You have to be careful not to get too close to the edges because the water will pour straight through the filter without making contact with the grounds. The filter isn't as fine as the other pour overs, which resulted in more silt than even the Snow Peak and Espro French presses. In testing, water drains significantly faster through this than the other pour overs. This resulted in weaker and worse tasting cups of coffee. Overall, it was our least favorite coffee to drink. I know that's a lot of negative things to say, but hear me out. With hindsight, I don't know that this brewer belongs in the same category as all the rest. To me, this serves more of the backpacking world than the car camping world. If we were out for a week or more backpacking, I think that's where this brewer would shine. It'd be better than instant and produce less trash than a pour over kit. So just keep that in mind. It's not that we hate it, I just think we put it in the wrong category. The mirror Porigami is very cleverly designed. It comes in three separate pieces that nest together to become your pour over. When not in use, they lie flat and fit in a handy storage pouch that can hold up to two Porigamis. The Porigami brews like a normal pour over and it works well with number one and number two filters. Even though it takes number two filters, I wouldn't brew large batches of coffee with it because the walls of the porigami itself aren't very tall. I think that's fine because having two porigamis takes up almost the same amount of space as just one. The porigami produces tasty coffee and is easy to clean since all you do is remove the filter. I really enjoyed using the porigami and it's another one that I'm going to be sad to see go. Last but not least, the Snow Peak Folding Pour Over. 
This is our own personal brewer, but it met the criteria, so we thought it'd be good to compare it. We like that it folds down to be nearly flat for easy storage, and it's easy to clean by just pulling the filter out. It makes a great cup of coffee and is easy to use for anyone familiar with brewing with pour overs. The Snow Peak can accommodate a number two filter and is larger than the Porigami, so if you're brewing large batches, it can handle it. I'd be hard pressed to pick a favorite between the Porigami and the Snow Peak folding pour over. I prefer the design of the Porigami, but I do like the extra capacity of the Snow Peak. In the end, I think it comes down to personal needs. That covers all eight brewers. It was certainly an enlightening experience for us, and we had a blast testing out all the possibilities. If you're interested in seeing more about the test, you can check out our blog post linked in the description of this video. There, you can see the different recipes we used and see more detailed information about the whole process. If you've made it this far, thanks for sticking with me through these reviews. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to be giving all of these away, so if you want to get your hands on one, drop a comment below and we'll randomly pick seven commenters to give these away to. We'll be doing the drawing a week after this video is published, so get those comments in. We hope you found this video helpful in your journey to find the perfect camping coffee maker for you. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you down the road. Uh... Uh, oh no. The poor Gami. The poor Gami. The poor Gami. Oh my god. <laughs>